would like to remind everyone that this show is brought to you by the Dolphin Wars. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to King Dolphin TV, the show where we interview, the show where we have fun, and the show where anything can happen, and we all know that that's the case. Welcome to episode 252, where we continue our reviews of The Fantastic Four. Um, we're going to do it a little different this time, um, per somebody's suggestion, that um, we're going to spend the probably about the first part of the episode talking about the Fantastic Four. Then we will get into the 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 actual issue. Uh, actually, no, we're going to do it up. So we'll do the issue first, and then we'll talk about uh, what made the Fantastic Four so, if you'll excuse, excuse the expression, fantastic. Um, so before we get going, if you like what we're doing here, and if you are enjoying these uh, interviews, reviews, the general fun, the chaos, uh, Please like and subscribe. As you can see, I have set up a poll. Yes, my first time experimenting with polls. So, uh, I'll put a yes with before it even started. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, me. I didn't even start the issue yet, and uh, someone put a yes. One person put a yes out there. Uh, I don't know. Must be a hidden hedgehog or something like that. Um, so if you like what we're doing here and enjoy the fun, the um, chaos, please like and subscribe. And um, I don't know if I can put a... Um, I don't know if I can put a... the. The tip thing or the, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can do both at the same time. Okay, let's see if that happens. But if you want to keep Snorter Poopus in his walrus tails and help out with PodCon and the rest of the channel, please uh, click on the tip, the tip stream link there and send some ducats into the buckets to help uh the, the channel um the channel succeed also remember i have a polar bear and i know how to use them so make sure you do do it otherwise i have uh guido the guido the snorter poopus um come and uh make you an offer you can't refuse so uh let's see uh, so let's get started here all right okay so right now we've got uh let's see oh it looks like i may do a print message oh okay it does do it all right so it works okay so yes Click on the tip stream and put a duck it into the bucket for Snort and the channel. All right. So here we are. Let us welcome the people who have come in. We've got, uh, 
Here we got, uh, oh my gosh, people are starting to come in in droves. Okay, got that, got that, and we got that. Okay, sitting here on deck in the chat is the amazing Scotty R37. Hello, sir. And who says, I love all the FF and every issue is gold. Yep, can't complain about that. Uh, we got my amazing Wrench Team Supreme, starting with our producer. Remember, this is in color, and it is a Sandra Feliciano presentation. So we have our producer, Sandra, out there keeping things straight, keeping me straight, and keeping me from going ber uh, berserk over here. Love you, honey. And we got uh, the first one in, the last one out. Look at us, Legion Eye, Troublemaker. He's looking forward to tonight's uh, episode. Uh, we've got uh, Fat Four Hire. How you doing, brother man? Uh, the Meme Master Supreme. And lastly, but not leastly, at least for right now, and I have to show him the due deference because uh, he... Um, he does hurt with his bear hugs. They hurt big time. We've got the amazing, the magnificent Slaughter Poopas. Kill bar. Dot scream. Hashtag. Roar. <laughs> yeah, let's get this going. It's Slaughter Poopas time. It's not a pulpus time. <laughs> oh, that will never happen. That will never happen. And also, here is Mike, the Comic Relief Crusader. How are you, my friend? Looking forward to tonight's uh, shenanigans. Anyway, so let us... All right, I'll leave it to the... Oh, damn. All right, let's... Uh, okay. Let's go into this issue here um, first, and then we'll talk about the Fantastic Four on the whole. What made them the greatest team ever? And yes, they are the greatest team ever. Okay. So, all right, again, I am doing this, I am doing this out of 44 years of the Fantastic Four, a DVD ROM collector's edition. Cool picture, cool picture. All right. I don't know if it's available anymore, but uh, it's uh, a collector's item. All right. All right. So this one here um, is not one of my favorites. I mean... I, I know they're still getting their uh their creative uh their creative things going on, but this this one is kind of uh um this is really one of their uh not best ones. Um so let's see. We are on Issue number seven. Uh, and I'm looking right now. All right. We're on issue number seven. The FF go to Planet X. So. 
and um, it's pretty much the the human yeah prisoners of Kurgo, master of Planet X. Yes, <laughs> funny, funny fact. Okay, so here's the cover. Again, they're scan. Um, they uh, did a pretty good job of scanning this. And uh, as you can see, um, they're, they're leaving Earth to go to Planet A. And then I love the ads. I yeah, love the ads. All right. So, yes, Prisoners of Kurgo, Master of Planet A. He's monitored. Somehow he's able to monitor the Fantastic Four, even in their secure building. Um, even in their secure building, where I'm sure Reed has put all sort of sorts of anti-detection equipment on board in, in the Baxter building to prevent them from being monitored. But this is uh this is what he does. So he, Kurgo, and I think that I do think that some of this this harkens back to the old 50s uh Marvel monster uh where they bring out these really weird monsters out in the uh out in comics. So this guy typically he you know typical typical uh um uh superior thinking um superior thinking I'm better than everybody else megalomaniac but unfortunately the planet has an issue there's a runaway as there's an asteroid heading for their planet so actually, this guy's got to swallow pride, and unfortunately, they only have two ships. Two ships because they don't, they never really cared about space travel. So he is sending a robot to Earth to capture the Fantastic Four. And meanwhile, on Earth, um, the Fantastic Four has a meeting, a, a dinner by the U.S. government in honor of their accomplishments. And none of them want to go. Johnny, um, Johnny um, probably doesn't think he'll speak. And the next thing you know, he may turn into flame. The thing, of course, you know, he's afraid. You know, he doesn't want everybody to see him and be scared of him. And then, so very shy and, and disappears and turns invisible and would probably be in in. She'd probably turn invisible because of shyness and um, then be embarrassed. So Reed has no sympathy for any of them because he knows you can't really refuse a request from Congress. So then, and then the first time you actually see one of the pranks that they play on each other. So he uh, did make cause the tor torch to make some steam, steam all over the place, and I like how I like how how Reed comes out of the of the vent looking all square, and um, And uh, Johnny and Ben are yelling at each other because of the prank. And Reed is upset because he has to leave an experiment because of this uh, meeting. So they are 
while they're arguing and stuff, the, the rocket, the spaceship uh, lands on Earth. No one could figure out who it is. And um, the FF start heading out in the flying bath. And then they, he sees the spaceship, but uh, they don't. They don't uh, do anything. And they got rubberneckers saying, "Hey, they, they're in the fantastic car and and admiring." And then the ship lands. And the robot comes out. He uses a scanner to detect the Fantastic Four. And, um, and even though they have a, a feeling that they're being watched, there's no way they can tell. So they're at the Capitol. And we've got... Um, we've got a, um, a way you can get an air conditioner. All right, so, check something out here, I can't. All right. Okay, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it sounds like the standard, uh, space, uh, space alien trope, and, um, uh, with, with their eyes on the Fantastic Four. And hello, real want want a nation black uh, black blog of random stuff. Okay, that one I'm gonna have to copy and paste on. Okay, so second here. Okay. All right. Hello, Wade. How you doing? Real okay, it's real Wade and Nation blog of random stuff. Hello. Okay. Let's see. Hello. Hello, FKHC 2005. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care that there's only two ships. It's just a way to have... It, it, it's just a way of that bozo trying to get power. They may have only two ships. Maybe they don't have the time or resources to make more in time for what? <laughs> okay. So um, let's go back to the air conditioning job. Okay. So. They're at the dinner. Um, my wonder, my concern, my I am wondering, why do they want them in uniform? I mean, it's, you know, this is a coat and tie dinner. Usually, it doesn't look like they're all in um, coat and tie, but uh, um, Reed is uh, irritated by it, but he knows they're famous. And of course, the thing is the thing. Uh, ready to uh, put a camera into somebody's um, face. 
Um, they're giving Ray, the Fantastic Four a um, giving the Fantastic Four trophy, and then the spaceship decides to do some some sort of ray that uh, covers DC and. Uh, Everybody is starting to go bananas. Um, wife hits uh, wife hits hubby with food. Nice man helping guy and gets uh, clobbered. And then uh, a congressman was going to give a speech and says that they're they're menaces. I mean, not that they haven't heard that before, but to hear it from Congress is not a good thing. And of course, they start doing a riot in the in the Capitol. Reed is uh, having them run, and uh, so so they're trying to escape. Of course, uh, everybody's blocking them, block blocking them. The, fan, the, the torch uses his flame powers. Raid retracts, letting letting the soldiers go bonk. Um, the invisible girl turns invisible, and the thing hides behind a wall. They rescue the thing, get into the car, and start... Um, Start running away. The robot is monitoring the, the the team and is following them to their headquarters. This does sound well. Uh, I'll say my stuff to for after. Um, we've got uh, they're seeing the spaceship. Johnny is showing them their their super duper uh, safety belts. Reed is Reed is a uh... huh. Wonder why they didn't show up on the message. Okay, so it, the ship follows. The ship follows the. Uh, the ship follows the team to their to the Baxter building, and then he the robot reveals himself. And he reveal he says he's got a message from Kurgo and and we'll we'll go right to the message. They um Kurgo is over there showing them the riot. And they look and there's a there's a mob right by the Baxter building. The um, the um, the robot is telling them what may happen if because they think they're monsters, they'll use light, you know, foam to extinguish the torch, confine the uh, Mister Fantastic, find a way to restrain. The thing and use an armband to keep track of the invisible girl. And he is offering the Fantastic for Asylum. That, you know, the team is pretty much uh, saying, nah. The Reed is saying they don't have a choice. And they go into space. 
And Ben says, Ben says, why are they even, why are they even going? And Reed says, he's curious just as much as uh, Ben is. So they go into space, go past the asteroid belt. I hit the wrong button. Yes, I hit the wrong button. Wait. And hello, Phantom Outsider. Okay, so they're going into space. And there's the boa constrictor. Uh, they start going down uh, using anti-gravity, and they land, and then they talk with the big guy, Kurgo. So he um, pretty much lords over to the Fantastic Four saying that this planet is superior to Earth, blah, blah, blah. But then they're saying, they're saying that the planet's starting to get destroyed and people are rioting because of the fear. And they find out because it's this asteroid. And he's saying, help us or we, we all die. So they show two spaceships for five to for five billion inhabitants. Um, ben is over there going, "What the?" Heck? Ben is upset because Reed got him into this, and then and then he, Ben tries to hit the the robot and. The robot uh, takes care of thing. The the uh, the torch set goes on, flames on, and he sees. Um, he goes into Nova Flame, and Reed is saying no, and Sue. And Sue goes in front of the robot, turns visible, and uh, the torch goes away, or moves away. Uh, Kurgo says, why waste your time? We got to save Planet X, and they only got 24 hours to do it. So... So they're over there, and Reed is coming up with an idea. And then the planet is actually, they can actually see the planet. And of course, Kurgo could care less for the Fantastic Four or his subjects, but he wants to be ruler of the planet. So he must save his people so he can stay the ruler. And the, they, He's taken to the lab. There's the Fantana. Oh, I like this question. I'm a great fan of the Fantastic Four and think it's tops. One thing puzzles me, though. Was the thing just as bad-tempered before the accident or did the radiation which made him a monster affect his brain? So... And they answer, good question. Actually, before Ben Graham became the thing, he was a rough and ready jet pilot, hot-tempered but good-natured, always ready to laugh for a challenge. In fact, before telling you more about him, an idea hit us. Perhaps he, we will, in a future issue, devote part of the story 
of the lives of the Fantastic Four before they got their powers. And there are stamps. You can get stamps at discount costs. Reed is working on a device. The team is the team is helping him. They he cre he finishes the device and he's telling everybody that this is reducing gas. I wonder if he had a talk with Pim. Hank Pim to create the reducing gas. So the gas reduces the two people to little uh, little pint-sized critters. Kurgle's saying, what? what this, how's this going to save the planet? And what he's going to do, is, what Reed explains is that the gas will cover everybody. They'll be able to get into the ship. The ship will... The ship will leave with the entire population. When they get back, they can be brought back to normal size. They head out to their spaceship, the spaceship, and and uh, and Ben knocks knocks away a piece of rock, and. Reed helps them get into the spaceship. The spaceship heads out. The ship, or the planet starts. They start reducing the people. The people get into the spaceship. Kurgo has a canister of enlarging gas. And he says he's going to keep the enlarging gas from the others. And thus he holds the power of life and death. He, he goes slowly but surely, I guess, to gloat. And he, he falls, loses the canister of gas. The spaceship leaves. He stays there. And it looks like he's going to have the fate of the planet. Uh, but Reed had a he Reed had a, had a, a ace up his sleeve. He didn't create he didn't re, uh, he didn't create an enlarging gas. Oh, they screwed up. Reed said, uh, Sue asked, are you sure the enlarging gas will work? And Reed says there was no reducing gas. So I think they meant to write in that, that there was no enlarging gas. So he, he only did it so they can consent to the plan. So they're going to go back to Earth. My question is... Um, my question is, if they go back to Earth, did the robot, um, use an antidote to get rid of the rage ray or did it wear off? They leave that totally hanging. But obviously, once they go back, they, I'm sure they're in good, good shape, good stead with everybody. All right. So. That is the the adventure on Planet X. Oh, you can get Christmas cards. All right. So <laughs> Beth says, I want I want a I want a live seahorse. Well, if you saw, here, let's go back. We got us a uh, good question. Um, 
Let's go back. All right, let's go back. All right. If you look at the frame, she turned visible at the last possible second. Here, let me get rid of the banner. Yeah, see? She um, she turned visible right at the last moment. Let's see here. Okay. If it's a secret, why is he advertising it? I don't know. And hello, dollar four five one. Okay. No, it looks like a, a different robot. Go away. All right. True. It is a good thing that the spaceship had oxygen. <laughs> See, these aliens figured out humans hate humming. That's why that mmm was. Try it if you hum yourself loudly. Everyone near you will tell you to knock it off. Reed, Reed had no intention. Reed had no intention to give him an enlarging gas. One must wonder. However, um, we, we know we're not going to be able to stop the rogue asteroid from coming over here. No, Phantom, I think we solved that problem here. Okay, so let's see what the poll said. What do you guys think of this uh, book? As I said, it it goes back to the old uh, Marvel trope where you've got seemingly undestructible monsters that are able to be thwarted by puny humans. In this case, though, the Fantastic Four were able to do it. I I do wonder if Reed had some previous, um, if Reed had some previous, um, dealings with Hank Pym. That would have been a good idea. Use the shrink gas to make the asteroid a pebble. That is a very good idea. But I guess the thing is, is they didn't have time to do all these things before the asteroid clobbered. Why am I saying clobbered? Well, I'm talking about Fantastic Four. Um, clobbered the, the planet. So... Um, out of the first seven, I didn't really like this one. I, uh, it, it really did not interest me a lot because like I said, it go, went back to the old trope, the old monster, monster of the week trope, or monster of the month trope. But I'd like to see what you guys think of this, of the, of the adventure to plant prisoners of Planet X. No, we do not. We do not. My guess is probably not. Otherwise, we would have seen Kurgo again. 
or maybe we will. And thank you, Real Way to Nation, for subscribing. Thank you very much. Oh, shit. Um, let's see what the poll says. Um, there is a poll up there. Um, it's still 100%, which... Oh, guys. Okay, yes, there it is. There's the poll. Wow. Everybody liked it? Nah. So, hello, Dollar451. Okay. So, Let's, it was suggested to me by a certain someone who does like to get, see these reviews that we probably should talk about the, we, we should um, talk about the Fantastic Four. Now, So it, it, it's four people, you know, it's a, it was meant to be a family with, uh, with modern day, with no, with current day problems who just happen to have strange powers. So. Yeah. <laughs> I see a pattern where Mr. Fantastic with little concentrations in the patterns in the panels find the solution on the first try. Is that an ongoing thing in the FF comics? I believe so. I mean, you know, you've got the greatest mind on the planet. Of course, Tony, Tony Stark would argue, Hank Pym would argue, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the greatest mind of the planet. Um, can usually find figure things out, find things out, etc. So, um, so I get, I think it is the trope, or at least in the early issues. Okay, so we've got, okay, so we've got, so they wanted, they, they didn't want to, to be like the Justice League of America. They wanted to take, they wanted to take a team, team of superheroes with problems. And I'm looking at Wikipedia and he said uh, let's see. I Okay, the characters would be the kind of characters I could relate to flesh and blood, have that false on foibles, fallible and feisty, and inside their colorful costumed booties, they'd have feet of clay. This was from Stan Stanley himself. So it there's also some Kirby saying he had a part in it too. So, but yeah, it was meant that they would be a family and they would have, like any other family, they would have family issues, but they it added with the, with, they have superpowers. 
So, so it starts out, you got Reed Richard, he, he, uh, really a brilliant person even before he got his powers. He decides to make a spaceship and go up in space. Unfortunately, the they're ready to lose their... Um, now, I'm paraphrasing from all the various retcons that I have read throughout my reading of the Fantastic Four. So um, the basic line is he made a spaceship and wanted to take it into space. His best friend, Ben Grimm, was was going to be the pilot. And exactly. In other words, they have issues but are able to put most of it aside to work as a group to get out of whatever situation they got into. Yep. Yep. So okay, so Ben is his best friend offering to do the flight with Reed. Um, Sue is his girlfriend, uh, Reed's girlfriend, and she was, which is why I, I don't really agree with a lot of the early, early portrayals, but I guess it's the time, sign of the times. She, she was learning to be an actress. She was trying to become an actress and, um, so uh, shyness is not, not part of what an actress or actor would do. You can't be shy and be an actress or an actor. So they, they actually, from various issues, Sue had a girl crush on Reed from the time he stayed with them when he was going through college uh, that so it never but the comics never really explained the age difference between reed and sue um, probably to get around the uh comics code because you can imagine the uh outcry on that um but again his girlfriend and then there's Johnny, the uh, hot-headed, Sue's hot-headed brother. Loves working on cars. Loves being a um, a hothead. And he somehow finagles himself on board the flight. And what happened was they... Um, they... When they found out they were going to lose funding or whatever, they decided just to go for it. And so they sneak upon the rocket. The rocket takes off, and they get hit with a cosmic ray storm. Ben was thinking the shielding was totally inadequate for this flight. But uh, so they get uh, um, hit by cosmic rays. And it it mutates them, and when they when they go to Earth, when they crash on Earth, they find out what what it mutated it to. Um, the first one to to change was Sue. She became she had the ability to turn herself invisible. The next one, when Reed saw this. Reed and Ben saw this. Ben started getting angry, saying, I told you so. And as he got angry, he started get, getting the rocks. He started turning into rocks and becomes a big ambulatory pile of rock. And he starts getting angry at Reed and gets ready to punch him out. Reed decides to... or. Reed tries to defend himself and then finds he can stretch. He can stretch and uh, he starts tying up Ben. Johnny's saying they're all monsters. He, he's scared. 
and then he turns he he ignites himself into flight so there are the the four people with strange abilities so um what they um what they do is Reed said you know we've got to use our powers to help humanity and thus they became the fantastic four in later issues spoilers um reed did this on purpose because he being a scientist himself realized that humanity is going to see this and then they they could be um used as ex uh, experiments or experiments or even worse and he didn't want to see that happen so what he did is he just said okay we're going to be superheroes we're going to save the world and he did things like make those goofy costumes he made things like uh gave them a, the flying bathtub make sure that they're not operating in public i mean they're not operating in secret he um, decided, let them be sub celebrities. Uh, let them be well known. And he did that as a means of survival. He didn't think about himself, though. He said he did it for the others. He said, let them, let them, be, let them be famous. Let them have uh, fame, fortune, and then, you know, maybe they'll forgive him. And uh, Legata says, you mean he gets calculated? Um, I'm not going to spoil it uh, because there is a re recent retcon, but the gist is for over 600 issues, yes, it was a, it was a miscalculation. And he felt guilty about it. So that is how the team got together. Is everybody hearing me fine? I'm wondering. My microphone is that one. Yeah, okay. Okay. So the, they're primarily explorers, although you can't really tell from the First, the early issues, because usually they had the super villain of the week. Okay, thanks, Snort. So usually they had the super villain of the month, rather, um, with a couple of recurring people, Doctor Submariner. So, um, but primarily they're. Their job is their job is to explore. They're more into exploring the unknown. Um, kind of reminds you that DC had a comic called The Challengers of the Unknown. Four people. They didn't have superpowers, but they did uh did a lot of exploring and and solved some some problems. Uh, and I think that came out in the 50s just before the FF. The goddess asks, they have to do it to help humanity. Then why do so many why do so many superpowered villains want to use their powers for personal gain? Uh, because they can. Um, You've got uh, super villains like Doc Doom. You've got uh, uh, I can't call Namor a super villain. He's misunderstood. I mean, he saw his kingdom get obliterated by a nuclear weapon. So yeah, he's got uh, some major revenge issues. But I don't think that I don't think that makes him a super villain. And then you've got like Galactus, who's the force of nature. Yep, 
Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. And so and when Clobber and I and I talked about the Fantastic Four way, way back when King Dolphin was in its infancy. And um it the yeah, that you know, and I think again, Reed had the saving humanity, yeah, they could have gone the wrong way, or they could have done they could have been left alone. But the thing is, um, but the thing is, Reed did the superhero shtick for preserving his preserving his family. Um, he didn't want them to become the mice in the lab, lab laboratory table, which it would uh, it would have definitely happened. Um, I mean, he's, uh, you know, the names that they had, um, the the fact that they don't they're not wearing masks. They're they're in their they're in these goofy uniforms with their faces showing, of course, thing. You know, so I agree. I agree, uh, Lagatus. In modern pop culture. They want to make all villains as misunderstood. Sometimes evil is just evil. Oh, and I agree. And Doctor Doom is really evil. He is really an evil person. Um, in fact, I think uh, maybe in a bit, maybe on another episode, I I have a graphic novel called Books of Doom. And I think we'll probably review that because that gives an excellent insight into Doom. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Um, the Because Doom is just, yeah, definitely a, a wackadoodle evil person. But I do not see Namor as being an evil person. Reed may be because he thinks uh Reed may be because he's jealous of Namor. Because Namor has the hots for Sue. So let me see what the poll says. Does the poll? Is it still? My guess is it's still just uh, our bear. Come on, guys, answer the poll. You couldn't have all liked it. So, but yeah. Um, okay, I will let the floor. If you guys got questions about the Fantastic Four or what insights I can somehow pull out of my hat, to um, to explain the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Snorta Poopa says, answer the poll. Rawr. And comics said, maybe we did. Okay. Okay. Yep. Kurgo. Kurgo, master of Planet X. Um, yes, I saw that. The Fantastic Four. Julia Garner joins Marvel Studios movie as a Shalabal version of Silver Circle. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. I am not going to comment on that. Um, 
I don't even like their splash page. It looks too cartoonish. And if you're going to use a retro version of the Fantastic Four, use the lettering. Don't use that uh, cartoony thing that they... In fact, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I am... Well, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here is... Here is, I guess, what they're planning on doing with their splash pages. Yeah, comic. I agree. I totally agree. I hate it, but I guess in light of... Uh, I guess in light of... What happened today, you can't really uh, be surprised. All right. Here is, the, well, I guess, one of the splash pages. I don't like that logo. Marvel Studios. That looks like a bad, that looks like a bad 50s logo. No. No. Use their, use the original lettering. Yes, I agree. Um, comic says, sorry, but we knew this was going to happen. But we got the comic, classic comics, and that's better. I agree totally. That logo. Ugh. I see. It looks... It looks so... Uh, 19... Yeah, Cold War-ish. Looks too Cold Warish for me. And Pedro Pascal is no Reed Richards. No. Okay. Pedro Pascal is no Reed Richards. I don't know who who we could have cast. Let's um. Okay, let's play a game while we for the next half hour. Who would if you ruled the mouse? Who would you put as um who would you put as the cast of the Fantastic Four? Um well let's see. No. In fact, here is a Here is a um, a good depiction. At least at that time. It's very possible he could have mutated. Because after all, he, he starts from a, a dis misshapen form of rocks to a uh, more defined pile of rocks and no a court uh, looking at this picture uh the thing is about rick uh reed richard's height so the only explanation is as he had mutated as the time went on and i but i don't think he um he ever got that taller. What do you mean, uh, the actor who played it in the recent version of Reed Richards? I, I don't understand. Um, who would that have been? 
unless it's uh unless it's a cameo character in the during the MCU movies. But yeah. Um True. Hungry would probably know for sure. Um uh, Yeah. But I uh, on most of the uh most of this stuff even even to this day he is more uh of a proportional proportionally done height. He wasn't very tall. In fact, I thought was cool is on a recent issue of Fantastic Four, which I thought was cool. Um, Clobby would disagree, but I do like this the North run right now. Um, Sue turns the whole team invisible, and and it's not just. The thing is not just a, a a normally proportioned human with a bunch of rocks on him, but he his bone his skeletal structure actually um, expanded. Oh, John Krasinski played Richards. Okay. Huh. I didn't see that Doctor I didn't see Doctor Strange too. So um Big it ding big it ding. So in fact they had they were actually saying that Krasinski was going to be Richards. I don't know why they decided on Pedro, Pedro Pascal. He's he's not going to be able to give the not knowing uh, his work. I don't see how Pedro Pascal could give the absent-minded, driven scientist vibe that Reed Richards is. But. Um, So, um, okay. Actually, I think the, um, I think the cast of the Fox Fantastic Four was a great cast. A great cast, um, if they had a bit of written story, stayed more to the canon. I do not like the, uh, they go up, to, they are part of a, I didn't like the go up to a space station and the space station gets clobbered by the rays. That's not how, that's not their origin. Yeah, Kirby uh, did created the challengers of the unknown. So he used that as an inspiration. Okay. All right. Let me go to the poll. Can't see the the problem is you can't see the poll in StreamYards, so I got to go to YouTube and see. Okay, now this is so ninety two percent of the likers of the people liked the issue, with only eight percent saying no. Cool. 
this is my first poll, so I'm kind of happy about it. Ooh. Something out there that they want to put in. Um, the Fantastic Four have um, had lots of friends, but they have a rather large um, rogues gallery. Um, anybody who knows the Fantastic Four, I would like to see your favorite villain, your favorite Fantastic Four villain, not named Doom. And where you would place them. Uh, we know where Doom would go. That So it'd be nice to see where all the also rans is are also rans are. Did I lose everybody? Comic, I know you have a you have a selection. You're Let's see. Lots of friends and a lot more fiends villains. But that is what all superheroes have that do, they do not. True. That is true. What I find is a lot of their friends and have ended up as members of the Fantastic Four. Usually to replace... Hello, Reniel. How you doing? Hello, Reniel. She's just about to work out. Wanted to say hi. Good to see you, Renny. So, um, of course, the family kind of got larger uh, a few years back with the marriage of uh, Ben and... Alicia, which uh, I thought was a long time coming. And in fact, spoilers, I didn't like the fact that uh, uh, Burn, wanted, uh, Burn hooked up uh, Alicia with Johnny. Now, granted, that's, that's not what happened, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that's. But I, I, I thought they should have gotten met. Ben and Alicia should have gotten married a long time ago. And stop with the, oh, she only loves me because she's blind trope. So. The goddess says, I don't know enough about FF to say if it's Doom or Silver Surface, Surfer slash Galactus, etc. Well, hopefully, hopefully if we keep this going, um, You'll be able to you'll be able to uh, get a feel. Like I said, I've I've been with the Fantastic Four since the '60s, and um, it's my favorite. It's been my favorite super team issue. With it, it, I've had times I've not read it. Because the art stunk. Um, but uh, all in all, that's my favorite team. My second is Legion of Superheroes. And hello, Matt G. Also known as Taylor Swift. Okay. 
but she's, but yeah, um, I. The reason I say not say name Doom because it is pretty much a given that Doom is the the uh, Fantastic Four's greatest villain. But uh, so, all right. Let's see. Okay, the poll. was 90 i'm going to end the poll because we're gonna start wrapping it up i gotta get ready for an away mission the poll there it is the poll was 91 percent yes that they liked it and no eight percent so thank you for particip participating in the King Dolphin TV first poll of ever. Because they haven't really set one up. So. Um, and remember. Make sure that you put some ducats in the buck ducats in the bucket or he's gonna visit. This character is gonna be visiting you with an author offer you can't refuse. The goddess says, let me guess, we had somebody voting for the robots. <laughs> yeah. Although it was only one robot. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to do show notes. Show notes with Mr. Ray. Show, show notes with Sandra too. To 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 Mr. Raymond, Raymond, push the button. <laughs> Lord says, that's my crime fighting cousin. Smelly at Ness. <laughs> Alright, show notes. Okay. This Saturday, and it will be a Saturday. Um, this Saturday will be just cause. The show where things go crazy, the kitty table is open, and fun is always going to ensue, just because this Saturday. On the, a week from today, we're probably going to do a Surfside chat. See how, see what's going to happen then. Um, then on... The weekend of the the weekend of the thirteenth and fourteenth, I have book signings. Um, both days of that week, uh, but I will be, I will be doing. We'll maybe doing. We'll be will. Bleh. We will be doing just cause. On Saturday, it may be just a little bit late. We'll see how things go. Because um, with the Sunday signing, I don't want to go 
I don't want to make a late. I don't want to do a Sunday show. So next week will be just Pez, a book signing edition. Um, and don't forget that the new improved All's Fair is out there with the new cover by Fed for Hire and new new printing, so you don't have to use binoculars to read it. And everything is new and improved for All's Fair. And then remember the secret project is still in pro progress. Um, now that I'm done with that, now that I'm done with All's Fair, I can start working on said secret project. And also, on April 17th, Stephanie Janicek will come and visit us. We'll see what the future of Star Wars is and all the noise uh, post the shareholders meeting. See what's going to happen. So that is everything that's coming up for King Dolphin TV. And uh, I look forward to continuing this wild ride with each and every one of you. And Laganis asks, um, do you know if Reed reverse engineered that flying saucer or anything else while on those away missions? I would not be surprised, Laganis. Uh, I'm sure... A lot of the tech um, that the FF had was based on alien tech that they somehow acquired. So, um, so that is that is everything for show notes. Oh, and of course. Snorta Poopa says, take care of a human, dolphin, doggo, Dalek, ferret, eagle, hedgehog, and dementor wasp. All right. So let's wrap up show notes. <laughs> All right, that was show notes. <laughs> I believe you're right, Pat. Okay. Let's see. Um, so that is this edition of King Dolphin TV Fantastic Four Reviews. Stay tuned in a couple weeks for the next exciting issue of the Fantastic Four. Which will be episode eight, issue eight. So um, that is coming up. And so, and again, please, people, please try and get me some interviews. Um, I'm going to be working. I've got a few that I'm working up the pipe, but it's always good to have others. So, all right. So let us, let me start our thank our shout outs and thank yous. All right. I'd like to thank FKHC2005 for being here. Thank you, sir. Phantom Outsider. Thank you for being here. Real Wade a Nation, blog of random stuff. Thank you, Wade, and thank you for subscribing again. The Scotty unit, Scotty R37. Thank you for being here. Matt G, alias Taylor Swift, greater than Disney. 
And that is everybody who came in to the chat. Now, the team, three, the wrench team supreme. Thank you, Dalek451, for being here. Thank you to the, 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 um, Meme Master, Fet for Hire. Thank you for being here. Glad to have you. Please check out his channel. We had the first one in, the last one out. Look at us, Legion Eye Troublemaker. We had the lovely Reniel visit us. We had the Comic Relief Crusader. Thank you for being here, sir. And and Dalek four five one the exterminator exterminator and finally you know him you love him you're afraid of him Snorna Poopas Cuba dot screen hashtag. Roar. Good show. Good show tonight. Everybody see you Saturday. Love you all. <laughs> all right. So, every and last or and of course, Queen Dolphin herself, the producer of King Dolphin TV, my other half, Sandra. Love you, honey. And and so, everybody, you have a great Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And we will see you on Just Cause on Saturday. Love you guys. Be safe. Dolphin Boys.